Next up we have the end of month or EO month function which calculates the last day of a given month. It can also be used to calculate start or end dates of previous or future months as well. Um, so the syntax wise just two components to this formula. It starts with your start date um, that can be a current date, it can be a random date, it can be any cell reference to a cell containing a date, and then the months component which is the number of months before or after your start or current date. So if I'm interested in the last day of the current month, I would put a zero for months here. Um, if I'm interested in the last date of next month, I would put a positive one. Uh, if I was looking for the last date of the previous month, I'd put a negative one and so on and so forth. So let's say we've got a start date or current date of uh, 8-3-2015 in cell C2 here. Uh, we can use the EO month function in a number of ways. If we want to calculate the end of the current month, we would use EO month C2 comma zero. Um, to calculate the start of the month, uh, you have to get a little bit clever, but you can use the EO month function to do that. So for instance, the start of the current month could be calculated using EO month C2 negative one, which gives me the last date in the previous month and then just add one to get the first date of the current month. So remember that dates really are just values because of that underlying date value. So adding one to it essentially just tacks on one day. So similar case here, uh, to get the start date of the next month, we can say EO month C2 comma zero to get the last day of this month and then add one to get the start date of the following month. So let's jump over to Excel and actually practice this. Um, for last day of the month in cell C12, all I need to do is write equals EO month, and then my start date or cell reference to a date could be C2 or C3. I'm just gonna choose C2 here. And what I'm gonna do is press F4 to fix that reference, which will give me the option to copy and paste this formula elsewhere while continuing to refer to C2. So I don't want that reference to shift on me. Comma over to the next piece, which is months. And in this case, I'd like the last day of the current month. So I'm just gonna put a zero there, close the parenthesis and press enter. So the result is 42247. And if you paid attention to the first few lectures, you'll probably recognize that this is a date value that it's showing me. Um, and that means that this cell is formatted with the general formatting type. So what I can do is right click, go into format cells, change it to date, and then select any option that I choose here. So I'm gonna go with the default uh, month, day, year option, press okay. And there you go, 831, 2015. Uh, keep in mind that depending on when you're actually doing these exercises, you're gonna see different values and dates here than I am. Um, don't worry about that, the concepts and fundamentals should still apply in any case. Um, so to get the first day of the month, I'm actually going to copy this formula, paste it down, and now remember the little trick, instead of zero, which applies to the current month, I want the last date in the previous month, so I'm going to put negative one, and then I'm going to jump outside of the parenthesis and add one more day to it, which will get me to the first day of the current month, which is 8-1-2015. So now last but not least, first day of year. This one's a little bit trickier. There are a couple ways to do it. Uh, the first way is to just copy and paste that same formula that I just wrote. But instead of looking one month in the past, I'm gonna look eight months in the past because the current month is August or eight. So this will get me the last day of December of last year. And then I'm gonna add one, which should return the first day of this current year. So I press enter that seemed to work, so I got 1, 1, 2015. Now, when you're doing it at home, you may not subtract eight months depending on what month uh, you're looking at. So we can modify this formula to make it work no matter what your current date and current time is. And to do that, I'm gonna just replace the minus eight here. So what I need to do is subtract the current month number, which requires me to know what the month number is, and then multiply it by negative one to get the right month component for this formula. So in parentheses, I'm gonna do negative one times month of current date, and then close off 
all of those parentheses. So to recap what I just did, now what I'm saying is I want the end of the month where my current date or starting point is C2, but the number of months that I want to look back in time is a function of what my current month is. So this is saying if I'm currently in month eight of the year, I want to go back in time eight months and get me the last day from eight months ago. If I'm in the 10th month of the year, I want to jump back and get the last date from 10 months ago and so on and so forth. And then again, this last piece is just to tack on that one extra day to get the first of the following month. So if we press enter, there you go, we get the same response, 1-1-2015, and that will now return the first day of the year, regardless of what your current date and time is. So as you can see, EO month is a really useful function. You can use it to do a number of very creative things, and it's a pretty critical tool for Excel users working with dates and times, because there's really no simpler way to do it Given the fact that the number of days per month varies, this kind of automates a lot of that tedious manual work that you'd have to do otherwise. So there you go, EO month function.